everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Deborah Lynn here in the studio. Time to get some pigment down. Hey, if you guys are new to my channel, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. So what I'm doing here, you guys, is I'm throwing some water down in the shape of a petal. And I did use my larger quill to do that. But for the most part, what I want to do here, this tutorial might be just a little bit more informative. I'm going to be talking about a few things that um, have been brought to my attention. I have a few people that are struggling um, with getting loose and I thought I would point out a few things and actually show you what might be happening. So between the last video I just posted, if you go to my page, you'll see another one in the same colors, pretty much the same, but they're gonna look different. Um, but I wanted to show you what can happen when you use a larger quill size brush versus maybe a round brush size 10 or 12, okay? Um, right now, I put some water down with a quill and maybe you use a larger brush too when you put your water down uh, to make your shapes. And then I grabbed that round brush again and I started applying the pigment with the round brush. Now, um, right now everything seems to be flowing nicely and everything looks well, but uh, as I progress, you will see that things get a little bit uh, a little sketchy looking with the skinny brush. It's not allowing me to have the loose effect that I would normally achieve. So I struggle through this painting with using the little dinky brush, using my basic techniques of how I paint, but doing it with that smaller brush. Um, at one point, I get frustrated and I grab my large quill and I save the painting a little bit by doing so. So you'll have to forgive me for that. I couldn't control myself. So I'm going in and I'm just dropping more of uh, this red pigment down. This is a Van Gogh and it is permanent red light. And I'm just kind of blending it outward. And dropping more heavier pigment in the center there and letting it disperse. And then um, putting some Quin Gold down and Aussie Red Gold along with the yellow I also have is Indian Yellow. And the green that I'm using is Green Appetite Genuine. Now the Green Appetite Genuine has a tendency to be very stubborn. It doesn't like to move its velocity and how it moves, um, it's a lot heavier body pigment, I believe. It's got, even when it granulates, you can see all the little particles and stuff separating in it. So it, it, it's, it's a little bit different. So it has a tendency not to just mingle with the water like the permanent red or the Aussie red gold and stuff did it where that just like whoosh it just you know ran across the paper beautifully um, and here I'm just scoring into the paper some twigs with the opposite side of my paintbrush so I get a lot of weird mark making um, with the small brush and uh, I do my best to uh, Loosen it up eventually. Dropping in another flower head here. Grabbing that red, throwing some pigment down, throwing actually too much pigment down. I'm gonna have to pick some of that up. There we go. And blend it out. Now if I had my large quill, that would have been done by now. So 
keep in mind that uh, you might want to, uh, you don't have to break the bank and buying a quill. Uh, just go to Amazon. There's plenty to pick from. Anything's better than a small brush. Let me just say that. Anything's better than a small brush. I think this is, I um, can't remember what green that is. It might be dust green because it pulls in a little bit of a blue color because it granulates and it's got a blue in it. I think I'm using some kind of uh, Van Gogh green, but I just, I don't recall what it was. And I'm kind of cleaning up the, um, the pigment that was encroaching in on my petal dropping some Quinn and Aussie gold into the center and letting it disperse and giving the center a little bit of texture, but still allowing the centers to remain with some white because I want the painting to be very airy and um, happy and that it can almost breathe. You gotta let your paintings breathe if everything is just like a big solid blob of paint, it's just not gonna feel right. And you can achieve putting white back in your painting with some bleed proof white, but for the most part, when I use the bleed proof white, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get that bouquet effect to the little spots to kind of uh, add another dimension to the painting. but it can brighten up the painting also. But if you play around with bleed proof white after it's down, you can muddy up your painting. So please keep that in mind. If you use bleed proof white, just be careful. Be careful once it's down. Don't mix, don't move that paintbrush around with it too much or you'll destroy your painting. And I like to also make sure that when I do use the bleed proof white, when you see me using it here in a little bit, I uh, my quill is full of water. I dip it in uh, the bleed proof, then I dip it into the water, then I shake it onto the paper. If I didn't do that extra water step of water, pigment water, it would be just water pigment and then when I would shake it then I would have pure white paint that would pretty much cover everything that you're seeing. Um, I w I'm trying to achieve a little bit of transparency with the blue proof white by axing that, actually adding that extra water at the very tip of the paintbrush. And as you can see, uh, there I go making some more twigs. Oh, and by the way, when you do this and it's really wet, uh, when you score that paper with like the reverse side of your paintbrush, um, you're just going to get the color that's down on the paper. So I just have like green vines or green twigs right now um, as a texture. If I was to wait maybe a few more minutes for that paint to dry just a little bit and then go do that, it would then actually separate the paint and you would see the white, you would make an actual white line and you would see the white paper. So it's all about timing. You guys might wanna play around with that a little bit and learn um, about how long it takes for you guys to, uh, to make a white line. That looks like a hot mess, doesn't it? looks like a hot mess up there with all those lines going every which way it's 
Cerulean Blue Van Gogh going down right now. This acts as a very beautiful complementing color to these, um, to this, uh, for this permanent red light. It just, just looks stunning next to it and it looks fabulous next to that um, green Appetite Genuine also. Now I definitely, okay, so now I'm going in with the big quill. Here I'm trying to save the painting a little bit. Just making these, uh, making it look like a Deborah Lynn painting for sure. Just adding my marks with my big quill. Unfortunately, uh, the, the leaves, uh, don't have that feel off to it but I'm going to do something here in a moment that will kind of marry that very textured background to the front that seems so soft because right now there's too much of a juxtaposition between the two that I don't feel like it's jiving together so I get a little frustrated and what I do is I actually grab the actual tube of watercolor and I work with the actual edge of the watercolor. I mean, the edge of the, what do I wanna say? I work with the edge of the tube, I paint with it. So you'll see that coming into play here in a minute. Leaf proof white going down. Softening some of that green. And try not to um, walk away from your painting too when you're um, when, try to try to complete your painting in one full hour or whatever it may take you without walking away from the painting um, because we don't you really don't want the paper to really dry um, as you see I spin my paper a lot because I like to um, work on the entire painting. So there's where I'm using the actual tube of watercolor, I'm using the edge. So just a little bit of paint is being extracted from the tube as I go around and draw with it. And I'm just kind of making the petal shapes, making the painting a little bit more, um, oh, what do I wanna say, whimsical. And it kind of, that texture kind of works with the texture of the leaves now in the back. I don't feel like there's a, too much of a juxtaposition. Well, for the most part, um, I work on the centers of these flowers a little bit. I use a gold dust, I think it's called Aqua, um, by, oh, I'm not in, that's not, I'm not downstairs with my art supplies, Sinclair maybe. 
um, and it's a gold powder and I have a little bit of the wet pigment that's on the center and then I put that little bit of uh, powder on it and it kind of clings to the watercolor paint and uh, it turns out really pretty. I'm just creating some highs and lows by putting that one ply paper down. I put it down, kind of tap it so lightly in certain spots and then pull it up just to give some variations. So it's not just like one big solid blob of paint. Here's the gold powder. Just putting on the finishing touches to the painting. Okay, well, that's my painting, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned a little bit in the process. Um, go out there, get yourself a big quill, and make sure you visit me on my new uh, group page on Facebook. You'll find that on my actual YouTube page where you can get the link, and also on my Instagram. I'd love to see you over there and connect. Okay, be safe, be well, and God bless. Mm -hmm.